In this video, we are going to be continuing to talk about the characteristics that are found in protons and MR. We are going to discuss integration and multiplicity. Let's get started with integration. Understand that integration specifically refers to the area under the peak that quantifies the relative number of protons that are present in a particular signal. So as you can see here from the bottom part of the slide, we have a proton NMR specifically that has four different signals. Understand that the, uh, the computer that you utilize in order to uh, have the spectrum be developed will calculate the area of each peak and is going to represent it with a step curve. The step curve is going to be that red curve that you see specifically drawn on each one of those signals. In addition to that, as you can see, we have given integration values and they are placed in the bottom. And this is just, it was chosen in order for illustration purposes to put them in the bottom of the spectrum. Understand that you as a computer operator, then you have to set one of the peaks to a whole number to let it represent the number of protons. Typically when this is done, you're going to take the smallest value in terms of the integration values and then you're going to divide them by each of the values that we have around. So in this process, for example, what you're going to be doing is taking 27 Point zero and divide it by 27.0 and then take all the other values and divide them by 27.0 so the result from that division is what gives rise to values that we see on top of the step curves so the um, if we start looking at the values from down, down field towards up field, you will see that the first <clears throat> signal will have an integration of 1, the second one will have an integration of 1.8, the next one will have an integration of 1, and then the last one is going to have an integration of 1.56. Remember, integrations represent number of protons. So at times you must adjust the values to whole numbers. So if the integration of the first peak is doubled, then understand that the computer will adjust the others accordingly to that. So in this case, as you can see, the first integration was set up to two. So that means that all the other ones are going to be doubled. So what does that mean? If we look at the ratio okay, of the number of protons on each, these signals, this is going to represent a ratio of two to three to two to three. And again, this is representing the relative number of protons that are going to be on each of those signals. Remember, integrations are relative quantities rather than absolute, okay? So when it comes to counting the protons, you have to keep that in, into consideration. More importantly, especially if you're trying to find the number of protons on an unknown compound, it is very important that you have the chemical formula for it. Understand that symmetry can also affect integrations. So let's look, for example, at the molecule 3 pentanone, which is given in the middle of this slide. So this molecule has two kinds of protons. So if I highlight them, the carbons that I highlighted in yellow, each of them has two hydrogens. Those are CH2 groups. The carbon atoms that I highlighted in blue, each of them contain three hydrogens, okay? So understand that for this molecule specifically, if you are given, in, in the textbook specifically, they have the proton NMR and they have the relative uh, integrations. So let me just write the page. When it comes to the textbook, 
Um, if you have the third edition of the Klein textbook, on um, page 668, you can actually see the illustration for the proton NMR for this molecule. When you look at the integration values specifically for um, this proton NMR, and I can just do a rough drawing of how it looks like. Let's say that this is the spectrum, and then this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is in ppm. And again, I'm just recreating the image that can be found in page 668. Around 2.4, we have a quartet. Around 1 to 1.2, we actually have a triplet. Okay. In the textbook, it actually illustrates that the integration values for the quartet is going to be 32.5. Again, the terms quartet and triplet, it is something that we are going to be dealing with in a few moments. That is just defining that pattern that we see in the peaks. And then this signal that is more upfield is... 48.0 so again this is the integration values so if we look at this integration values okay understand that these are going to give a ratio that is around two to three and again it's going the, those are going to be given similar to what we just explained the lower value will be divided by uh, the larger value in this case, and then we want whole numbers, so that's why they multiply by two. So the ratio that we have here for the two peaks are going to be two to three. Now, understand that if we then take into account the molecular formula for that three pentanone, it is important that we know it because then we can take into consideration that there are in this specifically molecule not five uh, hydrogens total. There's actually more than that. As you can see from the chemical formula, there's 10. So if now we look at the absolute ratio, understand that it is going to be four to six because again, if I um, go again and highlight my atoms, the two methyls in the corner, each of them has three hydrogens. That's where the six comes from. The two CH2 that are adjacent to the carbonyl, that's where the four come from. Okay? So understand that under, uh, having the molecular formula for a particular compound must be known in order to know the absolute ratio for a particular compound. So again, this is just a good indication. This is just things that we have to keep in mind that the integration value, uh, values are useful, but sometimes we have to take into consideration other aspects of the molecule. Continuing on, now we are going to start having a discussion about the concept of multiplicity. So what is multiplicity? Multiplicity is going to be the number of peaks in a given signal. So a few moments ago, you heard me talk about, oh, this is a quartet, this is a triplet. So what I was referring to is the pattern in the way that the peaks look. As you can see, the number of peaks that are given in a signal have different patterns and they are illustrated in this slide. So if you have a single peak that is called a singlet, if you have two peaks that is a doublet, if you have three peaks in which the one in the middle is larger, that is a triplet. And then going along, we have quartets, quintets, sextets, and septets. Understand that multiplicity results from the magnetic effects that protons have on each other. So let's take into consideration two protons that are on neighboring carbons and how would they affect each other in terms of the signals as we are going to view them in proton NMR. 
Again, if we are focusing specifically, let's say in, if we have HA and in NHB, if we focus on specifically the appearance of HA, so how would HA look like? As a signal. So understand that it is going to be dependent on HB. Why is that? Understand that protons are going to be aligning against the external magnetic field or it going to be aligning with the magnetic field. So if we're trying to look at HA because the appearance of the signal of HA is going to be resulting from the magnetic effects of the protons that is next to it. Understand that that HB, because we're, we're considering that in this example, we only have one neighboring proton, okay? What's going to happen is that HB can lined up at, or, or the magnetic uh, effects of it, uh, or the magnetic field is the word that I'm looking for, can be against the applied field or it can line up with the applied field then that means that there's two possible electronic environments produced by hb because there are two possibilities in terms of the electronic environments that's what results as a doublet okay the final appearance for ha let's actually now look at other examples so let's consider an example where there are two protons adjacent to a carbon. So again, we're looking at how would AHA look like? So we're going to be in this case, HA appearance or the HA signal, okay? HA is going to have two protons at neighbors, okay? Now, when you have two protons as neighbors, then understand that there's going to be three possible environments, okay, because of those two neighbors, okay? The three possible environments are going to be where both <clears throat> of the HB protons magnetic fields will be against the applied field, or there's another instance in which one is going to be with the field, the other one will be against the field. And as you can see, we have two versions. And that's why it's larger, because there's two possibilities. Or the last one is going to be where both HB protons are going to be aligned with the applied field. Because we have three possible electronic environments, understand that that's why the HA will appear as a triplet. Let's look at one more example. Because I hope that from this, you actually can start seeing a trend when it comes to multiplicity. So again, we are focusing on HA. We are going to have now three neighboring HB atoms. Understand that in the slide right now, we don't have the three. So I'm just going to go ahead and write it in. So we see the three HB atoms. So when we do that, let's just put HB here. Okay, let's just include it. Let me just make it less dark. But let me just put it in. So let's say that there's three HBs. Excellent. So when it comes to this, again, now we're looking at how would HA look like if we have now three neighboring protons on the neighboring carbon? Well, now because we have three protons, we're going to have four possible electronic environments produced by those HB protons. As you can see, we can have an environment in which all three HB protons are going to be, uh, or again, we're always talking about the magnetic fields, right? How they are aligning um, or, or not. So we are going to have the three HB protons be going against the field we can have 
uh, which is the first column. The second column is going to be where we have one that aligns with the field and two against. We can have two that align with it and one against. And as you can see, the patterns in the middle are taller. And then lastly, we can have an idea or a pattern, I should say, that we have all three HBs going with the apply field. How does that look like in terms of the signal itself? As you can see, that produces a quartet, okay, as a signal. And again, this is how HA will look like because it now has three specific protons.